darling. It's Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. That gal in black who's got the nice... Oh, you know. Anyway, I'm back to bring you the best... The best in home entertainment. That's right. This week's kick in the pants, slap in the face offering is pain. Let's do it! You know you make me wanna uh, But yeah, yeah, everybody's ripping me off, I think. Hey, Elvira, you got us a couple more volunteers. Great! Just grab a tool and start banging. I like yeah. you, and I, uh, you know, I just want to tell them, you know, stay out of the way of the front of my car. <laughs> for all the men in America. Randy? Uh, She's a phenomenon. Yeah, 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 sure. She started out with a local horror show here in Los Angeles. Now she is syndicated weekends all over the country. Young lady! Robin Meeker, what in the name of the nation are you doing here? You all gonna pay for your Robin! I'm going to find out about this young lady. She's a line of movie tape. She's a line of comic books. And her Halloween costume this year was the biggest selling costume of any Halloween costume ever. Robin, come over here. When are you going to learn to do with your toes? If you don't learn to do with your toes, you're going to get up on the It looks a lot better on her. So let's see her fill it out. Albion. Oh, I've seen it all, you know, yeah, and I've yeah. seen every scary movie there is sure. and, and all that. Um, I don't know. Politics probably scares me more okay. than anything. Yeah, especially in the, in the city. One woman, Sodom and Gomorrah, if you will. A slimy, slithering succubus. A concubine, a streetwalker, a tramp, a slut, a cheap whore. end up on my back. Mm, just like high school. Costume, or is that what you? Because you, is that you? Yes, Joan, it's, it's all me here. Yeah, this is this is how I look normally. I unfortunately can't wear a costume for Halloween. Because this is, you, you could really think of yourself as a as a vampire. No, and I'm not really a vampire. You know, I'm sort of more like. Well, I have vampires in my blood. I mean, my grandmother was a vampire. My grandfather was a ghoul, and then and then my mother married a TV critic, and I don't know what happened. <laughs> How about doing a few of the kind of moves you might do in Dirty Dancing? Richard's folks run the hardware store, and we got lots of paint. Oh, dude, too bad they done on the bank. Uh, I'll be right back. Needed to so. I mean, people are always writing letters to me going, Elvira, how can I meet a guy? And you know, I just go like around six or seven at night. I walk up and down Sunset Boulevard, and I tell you, I have more guys than I can handle. Of we'll make a real life, too. <laughs> <laughs> I tried my hardest. There's going to be an earthquake. Are you. <laughs> Tell me the good, you're in the Hollywood Wax Museum. Someone said, yeah, I just became a wax figure. I mean, that's like when you know you made it is when you become a wax figure, right? <laughs> yes, I was very proud. <laughs> yeah. Now tell me your girl. I'm like, mm, you know, out behind the studio or whatever. 
But uh, some of them are pretty good. There's like the Monster Club, which is about this club where monsters go. Hey, hey, baby. I mean, with her in mind, we wrote that part exactly, specifically for Edie. Um, because she was kind of a pain in everybody's butt at the Groundlings. She was, she was in the Groundlings with us. And I mean, every time, I, Edie was an ex-school teacher from the Midwest. And every time I would come into the Groundlings at night, she'd be sitting there and she'd kind of look me up and down. She'd go, are you wearing a bra? <laughs> No, why does it matter? And she's like, you know, she just get all huffy. They don't cry. They don't cry. Every single night, something like that. She, you know, I'd come in and she'd go, Is that what you're wearing on stage? <laughs> yes. But I mean, so we were just always like that, kind of butting heads. But we actually really loved each other and, uh, when, when this movie came up, we go, this part, Chastity Pariah, is Edie McClure. <laughs> and uh, we were so lucky we got her for it. Big girls don't cry. Big girls don't cry. Big girls don't cry. Big girls don't cry. In the films, you can do as many TV shows as you want. If you started out as a TV actor, you were never going to make a film star you. I mean, do you remember? Now it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, no. Everybody goes back and forth. So I said to Brandon, I would love to have a TV show on NBC, but first I want to do a movie. Hey, I got some gas. And he said, if you really want to do a movie, we'll finance the movie. Let's do it! You know you make me want to... It's amazing, because uh, NBC was not in the movie-making business. Hey, Elvira, we got us a couple more volunteers. Great! Just grab a tool and start banging. <laughs> so they decided they would finance the movie. And uh, we wrote it, myself and John Paragon and Sam Egan, and... Yeah, I was on the phone, guys. Or is he on me? I can't remember. Anyway. <laughs> what? Uh, and anyway, uh, I was on that show actually a couple of times uh, with John Carradine and all the Carradine brothers. So yeah, that was yeah, a trip. Young lady! That's how I met Sam. I just loved him and I thought he had written a great part for me. What are you doing here? You all gonna pay me? Robin! I'm gonna find out about this young lady. I really kind of captured the, my, the way I spoke and everything. And so when the film came up, uh, the fact that he had worked for Brandon Tartikoff and NBC, uh, we threw his name out there, they loved it. And so he wrote along with John Paragon and myself. John and I have been writing together since like the Groundlings in the 70s, and, and uh... Uh, but I think they put Sam with us to be a babysitter. Because <laughs> John and I couldn't control ourselves. <laughs> Alvaro, where do you want this? Um, just right up there. Okay. What's the bucket for? I tell you, oh, it's so cool. This is the part that I ripped off, uh, I mean, that was inspired by Flashdance. Yes, the show, as you know, is called Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, because, of course, it's all about me. Ladies and Doberman, it's time for the grand finale. And Lorraine Newman had just left for Saturday Night Live. Uh, Phil Hartman was one of her cast members. We were all together, we were like a little family. And uh, 
John and I just stuck together and started writing everything. He started writing my movie, the comp shows, being on the writing the songs that we did, like 3D TV and all of that. But, And we were writing partners for 21 years. We wrote everything. Wow. Yeah. The dancer becomes a dance. He was also a Jombie on Pee Wee's Playhouse. He was. He was Jombie the Genie on Pee Wee's Playhouse. And he directed all the Pee Wee Playhouses, too. So. Oh, no. Wanna talk tough movies? Here's a superhero with the biggest pair of all. You looking for me? There she was, just walking down the street singing. Miss Elvira is a slimy, slithering succubus, a concubine, a streetwalker, a trap. Yes, she's got it all. She's everything you've ever wanted in a movie. A woman and a casserole. Who was that pretty young man who auditioned for your movie? Oh, and I just found the casting call records, too, that, that we checked off everybody's names as they came through when we were casting. That beautiful young man was Brad Pitt. Yeah. And I didn't hire him! Because <laughs> I really know how to pick him. And, uh, I know Brad later, I got to know Brad because he bought my house that I had up in the Hollywood Hills. And I told Brad, you owe me big time, brother, because if I would have cast you, you would have been a nobody right now. She <laughs> rated movies as long as there's lots of sex and violence. The charge is witchcraft. <laughs> Elvira, as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. But if they ever ask about me, tell them I was more than just a great set of... In the lab late one night, when my eyes beheld an eerie sight of my monster... On Brad's name, all I put was Yum Yum. <laughs> he did the monster match. The monster match. We had a specific reason why we didn't hire Brad. I did. I said, if that kid would be on this set in this movie, there is no way Elvira would keep her hands off of it. And he's playing, you know, a teenager. He's under 18. And it would just not go well. To get her jolt from my electricity. Brad was my, as she said, stand-in and other double um, for the movie. And then we became friends. And then she became my assistant for Seven or eight years, she traveled with me on the road and uh, uh, worked, at, you know, all the jobs and out at knots. You may remember her. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, but she was awesome, and, and uh, it's funny she had this boyfriend too, who she was always complaining about because she had to work all the time and he didn't he, he didn't pay much of rent or anything. And um, he turned out to be Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> and when he got his TV show, he dumped her ass, of course. <laughs> After they've been living together seven years, yeah. It was a graveyard smash. They played the match. It got on in a flag. They played the match. And, you know, we did some research also, and we found out that all my fans can either, either remember my name or the name of the show, but not both. Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? It's now the match. It's now the monster match. The monster match. I blame the Facebook. <laughs> I really do. The Russians. Uh, so we went over to War Warner Brothers and shot in the back lot, right where they did Back to the Future there, you know, on that clock tower. And uh, that worked out great for us. They, they recently tore down the house. Did you hear that? Oh, no. The Elvira house? Yeah, they tore down the Elvira house that was painted all the different colors. And you buy graveyards. Thank you, good night. You'll catch all in a flash. Thank you, good night. And I was walking down Melrose Avenue one day in the 80s, and I saw this uh, 1959 T-Bird, and I go, that is the Macabre Mobile. And then I told the crew of Mistress of the Dark to please go out and find that car. 
and they did, but they said there's no way we can afford it in this budget. So they found a hard top of it and sawed off the top. And uh, that became the McCallmobile, and I've, I've had it ever since. It's gone here and there, but I finally wound up with it. Damn good looking, and I, I found those notes, and you know, next to every actor, I'd write, you know, something like, uh, Anna. <laughs> anyway, really good. And anyway, so she was 87. She started acting when she was 87, and she got commercials like crazy, television shows like crazy. She got this movie, and we became very, very good friends till she finally passed away, and I'm still in touch with her son, who's like 90. Um, but but uh, she was wonderful. She did such a great job. And she came on Movie Macabre a couple times as Antivirus. My aunt. <laughs> and you better duck when I show up. And the character then was named after him, Uncle Vinny. Um, but uh, Vincent and his wife, Carl Brown, thought there was a little racy this movie for him, you know. Um, so he did not do the film, unfortunately, but we did get Morgan, who was wonderful. He kind of had that big surprise vibe, you know. It was the English, and he, you know, I, I, he carried it off great. And uh, uh, yeah, that's the story. He was kind of our second pick, but he ended up being a fabulous, doing a fabulous job. Oh, there you are. I have been looking all over for you guys. You are not gonna believe the good news. Yours truly is hosting a special midnight screening at Fob's Theater of one of the worst movies ever made. Let's find out on Elvira's... Maybe, maybe not. Thanks. Hey, what is this? The invasion of the body snatchers? Sure, that horrible explosion looked like it wiped out all signs of the alien invaders, but did it? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> okay. Look, two days ago we were bosom buddies. It's the principal. You're darn right, it's a principal. Friends ought to stick together. No. Maybe, maybe not. Give me that thing. Mother. No. I mean, the principal, Mr. Cobb? You'd kill us if we went to your show. Okay, listen, when I want your opinion, I'll beat it out of you, okay? <laughs> but if they ever ask about me, tell them I was more than just a great set of boobs. I and my dad are right behind me when I come into town and I'm talking to the teenagers. I'm saying, well, what are you big, big, strong men? And I'd like to give me a little... And uh, my mom and dad are standing right behind me over my shoulder. <laughs> right. Well, I'll just stick this where the sun don't shine. So you're part of the Marvel Universe? <laughs> yes, we had a comic which a, a lot of people had brought to me to sign today. Marvel comic of the movie, which is one of my favorite comic books I've ever done. Uh, they did an awesome job of kind of getting the movie into it. Uh, Bob, I'm in show business. I think I know how to spell matinee. Movie. They cut it out. Well, they didn't cut it out. We didn't shoot it. They ran out of money. And so they were going to end the film, swear to God, I mean, this blows me away, of me sitting on the porch and being all depressed because I can't get to Vegas. And then the mechanic drives up and there's the car and the townspeople come and say how fabulous I am. And, and that was going to be the end. It was sad that that day, that was a shooting day, just one day, I had the flu. See that guy over there? What, the lard bucket and a 10-gallon half? Yes, that's the station you own it. This is uh, Elvira. The sooner I get in the saddle, the better. Go ahead and fire me. I need this job like a leper needs a three-way mirror. It just so happens I have an act opening up in Las Vegas. Well, terrific. You can try your act out on me. It's milking time. <laughs> I don't have to take this from anybody. And as for you, you freak this cowpoke because this house is up for grabs. Doesn't mean I am. And I went into Brandon Carter uh, Tarikov's Tarikov, Tarikov, office and I sat there. The secretary said, oh, he's busy. And I said, I will sit here until he's not busy. If it takes me the rest of my life. And I begged. I cried. I pled. Please, please, please. You've got to get the money to shoot that Vegas scene. This movie just does not work. There's no ending. Nothing but a bad dream just as soon as she sells that property. An open house has already been planned for tomorrow. But what if she decides not to sell? What if she decides to settle here? Well, 
Well, if she's morally unfit, then we have every right to do anything we can to get her out of this town. Are we agreed? Absolutely. You're here. Maybe we're not being entirely objective about this. Shut up, Leslie! And after three months, I think, of being shut down, we came back, we went to Raleigh Studios, and shot that Vegas scene. And, I, I mean, I was never so happy in my life. Hey, so does anybody know what that movie was about? Uh, I'll tell you what it was about. It was about an hour and a half too long. Anything for a story. Uh, unpleasant dreams. Listen, sister, if I want your opinion, I'll beat it out of you. Ah! Anita! Anita! It's the Antichrist. I can't deal with it. Anti. Lots of people say to me, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, I'd like to be able to carve a swell jack-o'-lantern, but I just don't seem to have the knack. Well, these are a few pointers on the fine art of creating the perfect jack-o'-lantern. Rule number one, you want to start out with a pumpkin that looks like a pumpkin. I mean, don't get one of them gnarly old jobs that looks like Carl Malden's nose on a cold day, okay? Now, this is a good-looking pumpkin. Now, the next thing you want to do is draw a face on that pumpkin that looks realistic. I mean, don't just start carving away freehand. You might want to work from an actual photograph, like maybe of a famous person like, oh, you know, Ozzy Osbourne or, or this dude, okay? Now, do the best you can at drawing that face on the pumpkin. Use a magic marker like this, you know. I draw a really good mouth on there, okay? And then you, you know, might want to put a nose like that. And then draw two eyes that look right, okay? There. Now, don't that look just like Rick Ocasek from the cars? <laughs> okay, now it's time to carve those features. Now, choose your cutting instrument wisely. Lots of folks like to use the traditional butcher knife for this part. But I prefer this. A chainsaw. Yeah, thanks a lot, Captain Description. But, yeah, thanks a lot, Captain Description. But before I get to take off and ride, we uh, gotta finish the movie. So, to catch up, because I know you dozed off. The Baron couldn't revive the monster with all that techie, sciencey stuff, so he had to uh, go seeking the aid of Zolt. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I just had too much beer. I have only one sip. I just have one sip. So, raise a Frank and a Stein, and let's see how this all works itself out. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the bottle I was trying to get. So oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, there's a little nocturnal emission down there. Oh my god! I have a little nocturnal emission happening. <laughs> I was trying to keep my tongue in it so I wouldn't start drinking it. <coughs> Didn't work. It worked out so good for me.